Is this thing on, off, middle ways, or can, it, can you hear me? Oh, okay, good. Well, that's wonderful. Boy, I need to talk to Mom and find out about this boy. <laughs> yeah. Good to have you. I'm glad you're here tonight. Uh, it's amazing that you are here. Here's, here's the deal. Did you know that before you were created, God knew that you'd be sitting in that chair? That is absolutely amazing. You say, no, no, wait a minute, Bobby. I just decided to come. No, you're here by divine coercion. Here's what it says. Psalms 139, verse 15 and 16 says, All of our days are written in His book before we've ever lived a single one of them. Every single day. So that would be 5, 5, 18. Today, somewhere in eternity past, God picked up his pen and wrote in his book that you'd be sitting in that chair tonight. Isn't that amazing? Now, that talk, talk about purpose and design. That's pretty amazing. All of our days are written in his book before we've ever lived a single one of them. I suggest if we're going to live a successful life, we should make his journal become our journey. His journal, what he wrote down about us, should become our journey. We should be walking every day according to what He's written for us. You say, well, how do we find that out? You get in touch with God. Uh, Nehemiah 9.20 says, He gave His good spirit to instruct them. Say good. good. Nehemiah 9.20. I love that verse. He gave His good spirit to instruct them, them being the people of God, and withheld not His manna from their mouth. That's pretty intriguing. And his, he, he gives His good spirit to instruct them. So I looked up the Hebrew word instruct, and it's a broad, broad, broad word. It's all, it's all the way from a mother teaching a toddler to walk and a general teaching an army to march. So the Holy Spirit will direct us and give us guidance in every spectrum of our life. But I like that latter part of that verse, Nehemiah 9.20. And he said, he did not withhold his manna from their mouth. And when I think of that, I think of Revelations 2.17. Have you thought of Revelations 2, 17? Here's what it says. To them that overcomes, I will grant to eat the hidden manna. I'm already intrigued. God's got hidden manna for us to eat. I'll let them eat the hidden manna, and I will give them, Revelations 2, 17, I will give them a white stone. And on the white stone, there's something engraved that no other human being on earth knows except the person that received it. Wow. What is written on that white stone? Your new name. Your identity. You and I will never know who we are unless God really tells us who we are. And you better be sure of this. The devil is constant and he's continually doing everything he can to get you to not believe who you really are. He's all, you remember when Jesus was baptized? Heavens opened. Father God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Now Matthew 4 says, Jesus was led into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. What's the first thing the devil said? If you're really the son of God. Wow. Do you see his method of operation? God tells you who you are and instantly here comes the devil trying to talk you away from what God says your identity is. And you and I need to understand the devil is a liar. And he will lie to you about who, who God says that you really are. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about sonship. Now, I'm not talking about a gender here. Uh, ladies are sons also. If I can be a bride, you can be a son. You, you understand what I'm talking about? But anyway, here we go. For 23 years, say it, 23 years, 23 years. on the Day of Atonement, on the Day of Atonement, I've had the visitation from Jesus Christ. Now, I'm either standing here lying to you or for 23 years on the Day of Atonement, I've had a visitation from Jesus Christ. He'll come tell me some of the things that's going to happen in the future and I write in a book called The Shepherd's Rod. This is the one for 2018. This thing's squealing a little, but don't worry. Jesus didn't even have one of these things. He just got out in a boat and let his voice go across the water. He got up on the mountainside, let the winds carry his voice. But the Holy Ghost will put the word in your heart. You know that, don't you? He really will. Here's what God told me. He said, Bobby, when you get in the, the meetings, leave their head alone. Just fling the seed in their heart. He said, I'll guard the seed that you put in their heart. I'll keep the fowler there from stealing a single seed. And I'll cause the seed that you put in their heart to spring up and bring forth fruit. 
So I'm not going to, you can't, you can't keep up with as fast as I talk. You can't write enough notes for that. So I, what happens is you're going to get it in your heart. And then the Lord will nurture that seed and bring forth fruit. Yeah. I'll slap you like a horse and come on in. Yeah. Oh, boy. But we're going to talk about uh, some things tonight. We're going to talk about sonship. We're going to learn more about sonship in the next few days uh, than we've known our whole life. I am telling you the message that hell hates more than any message is the message of sonship. Because God wants you to know who you really, really are. He predestined you to be his son. Uh, it's amazing. You said, well, what's so important about being his son? Because this, we're joint heir with him. Anything he has, we're co-owner of it. And the Bible that you hold in your arms says this. says he's a rightful owner of the whole universe. So, wow. What does that make you? Co-owner of the universe. Rightful co-owner of the universe. You're joint heir with Jesus Christ. The word joint heir means anything he has, you have equal share. Wow. No wonder the devil doesn't want you to know who you are. So for 23 years on the Day of Atonement, we have this visitation from Jesus. Here's what happened on this one. I'll just tell you. the, The Lord told me one time, he said, I want you to put your books on audiobook. You know what I mean, where it's audio. So I thought, well, that, that'll be good. I think that'll be fine. So here's what I decided to do. I decided I would get a, a what they call a ghost reader. One of these guys can actually speak English and pronounce the words and stuff like that. Uh, I went to London, England, had to have an interpreter. <laughs> now, that's the honest to God truth. I went to London, England, had to have an interpreter. I speak Texican. <laughs> but it's going to stun you. You ever hear God talks? He talks just like me. Now, I'll tell you how he talks. You want to know? He talks just like you listen. John 10, 3, my sheep hear my voice. John 10, 27 says, other voices, they'll flee. They'll draw near to God's voice. But uh, here's, here's what he said. I want you to uh, do uh, an audio book. So I was doing this thing with these ghost readers. And the Lord said, that wasn't what I told you to do. I told you to do an audio book. And I thought, oh, you mean me read it? And he said, yes. <sighs> So I thought, oh, well, how hard could that be? That's what I thought. And then I found out how hard it was. Good gracious, I got in there in the studio and got all the things ready. And it sounds like, see, spot, run. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, the reader that you got the first grade. You remember that one? It was like that. But anyway, I just want to talk to you a little bit about sonship. Here, here's what happened. On the Day of Atonement, this past Day of Atonement, uh, I was waiting before the Lord. I live in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. And it was a beautiful sunset. The Day of Atonement started on the, uh, when the sun sets. And so it's just the sun's about to set. And all of a sudden the sky got beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. And then it turned purple. The clouds seemed to turn purple. And I thought, Lord, what is that? And I, I noticed it was robes. And he said, this is going to be the season of the robe and the ring. Remember the prodigal son? Remember the prodigal son? He said to his father, I don't like how you're running things, took his leave, went into a foreign country, wasted everything he had. Remember the story? He was in a pig pen. And that's what the Lord told me. He said, Bobby, this is going to be the season. I bring my people out of the pig pen of poor perception and get them to understand their sons and daughters of the Most High God. And so he said, I, I, he said this is the season of ring and the robe. And so the ring and the robe, and purple robe talks about royalty, and the ring talks about authority. And so God's going to teach you more about being a real uh, king and a priest. Remember Revelations 1, 5, and 6, it says, Unto him that loved us, washed us from our sins in his blood, and it's made us to be what? Kings, Kings and priests. Wow. I like that, don't you? See, anyway, here we go. Ring in the robe. Uh, it's time for the ring the robe, the Lord told me. This is Romans 8, verse 14. For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. All of those that are allowing themselves to be led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. We need to find out what is the benefit of being a son of God. What is the benefit of being, a, a, it's called a huios. There's two different words in the Bible for son. And one is tecton, which means child. And the other is weos. Every time it talks about Jesus, it's weos. A full, full grown son ready to take over family business. That's what God wants to do. He wants you to become a full grown mature son so you can take over family business. Remember what Jesus said? As my father is sending me, even so now I'm sending you. 
Say commission. commission. God is commissioning us to go out and do the works of Jesus. Did you know that you're supposed to do greater works than Jesus did? These works that I do and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. That sets the bar high, doesn't it? You know, let me tell you, Jesus told me once, he said, you tell my people, I'm not a politician seeking to be elected. I say what I mean and mean what I say. So he just told us we're supposed to do greater works than he did. Here's your great verse if you want it. Ephesians 2.10. Say it. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I studied Ephesians 2.10 out of every English translation of the Bible I could find on earth. Every English translation of the Bible I could find, I studied Ephesians 2.10. It says, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God before ordained that we'd conduct ourselves in them. So, I started looking at that verse in different translations. We are, here's one of them, the translation says, you're the best God could do to display who he is. One of the translations says, you are a stroke of genius to display his God deeds. So when the devil says to you, who do you think you are? Go, mm, I'm the best God could do. <laughs> we got to get a new opinion of ourselves. As a person thinks... That's how he's going to live. If you think you're defeated, and then here's what's going to happen. The message of sonship will drive away, drive away an orphan spirit. A spirit that always tries to tell you you're not worthy of it. Jesus made us worthy of all of it. The Bible said you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. I dare you to look up that verse in Peter. You're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. The word precious there is a Greek word we don't even have a word for. It means incalculable. It's so valuable, so precious, that you can't put a value on it. The blood of Jesus. So when